Hello and welcome to our last week of Introduction to Film. We're going over sound this week, our last regular week. We've got two more weeks, um, our last regular week of regular coursework. So this week we're, we're reading and, and discussing sound and elements of sound in film. And uh, we also are watching the Kasovitz film La N, which means hate is a really exciting and ambish, ambitious uh, name for a film, right? Okay, so what we're... Um, the, the film itself has a lot of really salient, really striking photographic elements and other stylistic uh, bravado elements. Um, but we're looking at the sound, which I, I find really interesting. Um... Uh, the three actors you likely will have seen in other films, Saeed, Hubert, and Vincent Cassel, who has been in numerous American films and, and uh, very important international successes. Um, so uh, that's interesting. What you might not realize is that the director also is quite an accomplished actor of, of in various films. Um, Matthew Kasowitz is is in uh, Amelie and a number of other films that American audiences are extremely familiar with. Um, but this film packs such a punch. Um, it's not a very quiet or thoughtful film. In, I mean, it's, it's extremely potent, um, but it, it is very in your face and there is such beauty in the way that it's in your face. And, um, and I've included two, two essays that examine the film 10 years after it was made and uh, another film that examines it 20 years after it was made, um, even though it seems just as fresh and vibrant today as it did in 95 for me. So, not that old, but um, really, really striking work. The the reading on sound is extremely helpful, and I highly recommend it. Uh, I don't know that that will help in describing in in your writing about film as much as other things. Uh, you need it for the quiz. Do it obviously. Uh, it's good stuff to know and just be versed in. The things that I would say are most important for you to get from the discussion on sound are the terms diegetic and non-diegetic. Uh, you need to know these things, I think, in life when you're talking about film, but for the class as well. Okay, so what is diegetic? Within the world of the film. Non-diegetic is outside of the world of the film. Title cards, non-diegetic. Uh, but if someone writes on a window and they're trying to communicate to someone in the world of the film, those words written on a window are diegetic, right? Sound uh, can be diegetic and non-diegetic, and it, understanding the difference between those two things will help us with the one thing that I want to get across in this mini-lecture right now. Um, so if you're at a party and there's music playing at the party, it is diegetic. Um, if it is non-diegetic, it is non-diegetic if it is if it if the characters in the story cannot interact with it. Um, uh, I made a film when I was uh, ab about ten years ago. I made a film where while I was filming it, I had microphones on the actors, and the microphones stayed on and they left frame and they kept going but I kept filming what they what was going on in the frame even after they left um, they kept going and they went in an elevator they went downstairs and they actually left the building but I kept recording and it was attached to the image this was really a, a strange thing because th the shot kept going for something like seven or eight minutes after they left and I had them talking for the entire time. I end up using that audio, I end up using that sound in the film. Um, it was off screen, but it's still diegetic, even though it became a different thing. 
it, it was still diegetic. Um, but, for instance, if I started speaking over that seven-minute shot of, of what went on after the characters left, I'm not a character in the f film, and so me speaking over would be non-diegetic. But since they were characters in, it was just off-screen that was still diegetic. But we we didn't have access to their world. We only had access to what we were watching in this wor world. Um, and so we couldn't hear what was going on in my film. We couldn't hear what was going on in front of us, but we could hear what was going on in these characters' worlds who had left the screen. Um, uh, which, it was an interesting film. Uh, I... I'm glad I did it, and but it it was an it was an interesting thing. So um, that's one element of that's one thing that we need to know: diegetic, not diegetic. Um, I'll say one other thing, one other term that is not discussed as much in the reading is synchronous and asynchronous. Synchronous just means in time. Um, asynchronous means it's not in time. Um, uh, so it's not it's not unified. It's not up to speed with that. That's an interesting, it's an interesting concept. Um, so, if you are watching a film and the lips are not matching, so in uh, in Italy you have people who are uh, dubbed dubbed over all the American movies because they don't like reading subtitles in Italy. American audiences really just don't won't stand for dubbing. They just do not. Um, unless it's an animated film, for obvious reasons. Uh, but in Italy, it's completely acceptable for you to have asynchronous sound. So you'll be speaking, and then you'll see the lips, and it'll be something different. But what if it's a little before or a little after what the lips are doing? What if instead you have a wave that comes crashing on the s screen, but you see it's just silence, and then it goes calm, and then you hear the wave crashing afterwards. Um, even if it's just a, a second or two, it, it would create kind of an otherworldly effect. Um, there are ways for things to be synchronous, asynchronous, sound to be sped up, slowed down. There are ways to manipulate sound. Um, I don't know that any of those uh, really come to light or come to the surface in the end, but, uh, but there are things to be thinking about. Okay. Um, w the last thing that I want to get across that's so important um, I want to ask this what does it mean to be manipulative that's, it's an extremely important word that I don't think that we can really think about film or literature or art in, in, a, co in, a, in a high level without understanding this word and it, its implications for the arts um uh, when, when you are supposed to feel what the filmmaker wants you to feel, and you're, you don't have room to feel something else, that's, that's a manipulative film in my mind. Um, people might say, well, what's wrong with that? You're supposed to feel things in a film. And, uh, you're right. Um, feeling things in, in films is really a, a powerful part of what makes a film a film. But I find it, I find it stifling and spiritually draining and uh, intellectually infuriating and uh, emotionally even abusive at times. Um, sound and score and music is one of the, the biggest ways that this um, that, that things become manipulative in film. Um, there, there was a woman who I when I, I lived in Europe, the last time I lived in Europe she was another American who lived in the, a neighboring uh, apartment to me, and uh, we were some of the only Americans that were there in the whole city. And we were both on we were both working at this um, university, and it was so interesting to see how we had to interact with each other simply because we were both American. We never would have really spent time together other than that, um, which was striking and fascinating. Um, any time I spoke to her at a party, I felt like I was being blamed or upset. I mean, she was upset for me just having opinions that were different from hers. 
uh, I felt like any time that I spoke to her, uh, she would try to direct the conversation and get me to say exactly what she wanted. And I felt kind of trapped, and I just really hated that feeling that I needed to say what she wanted me to say. I need, She only asked questions that that had one answer and I had to give her her answer and if I disagreed with that she'd get very uptight and and I just felt controlled and boxed in and it was this exhausting emotionally really exhausting relationship and I didn't understand how to function with this woman and uh, I just didn't know what to do and I've sat on it a lot, and I realized that a lot of films that I have that I watch, uh, a lot of films that are made, give me the same feeling as I have when I'm with this woman. Or that I, you know, that when I was with this woman. Uh, is that if I didn't think or say or agree with what, you know, they had to say, if I didn't think the film was being fair to one of the characters, or if I didn't, particularly want to be sad at the moment that the film said you have to be sad because of the music just the music swells and the camera comes in and has to do all of these really big things and I just I just thought you know I don't, I don't want to be sad now I'm actually pretty upset about something that happened earlier in the film for instance um, we look at Ozu and and we talked a lot about pillow shots in Ozu and and how you would have an event, and then it would cut to an empty screen, and you could just project onto that screen maybe what you were, or an empty, like a, a, a blank-esque canvas where it's just a, a, a railway sign or a, 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 an outdoor shot or a pillow. And, and by, by seeing those things, you got to experience whatever emotion you were going to experience from what had just happened. Sometimes it's anger, sometimes it's fear, sometimes it's rapture, sometimes it's it's uh, just complete <sighs> anger, I don't know, sadness. Um, the point that I'm trying to make, fumbling through, is that sound can be used to try and make you feel things. But it doesn't need to do that. Um, it doesn't need to do that. And I think Len is a film that definitely guides you with what you're supposed to be feeling at every moment with the sound. And then there are other moments where it's just exhilaration and it, it pushes you through and and you have a little breathing room because of the music. But there are definitely times where it pushes you, it guides you through to this is what you're supposed to be feeling right now. And um, I, I had an old roommate actually in college who, who when we would speak, he'd, he'd get really self-conscious about a lot of things that were going on in the conversation, and he would constantly second-guess himself, and he'd say, no, man, that was so funny what you just said. You, you got an A-plus from me. And he'd say, me, on the other hand, <laughs> I don't know, I'm at a, a C, maybe a C-plus, B-minus, maybe even a C-minus, <laughs> I don't know. That thing I said earlier, definitely a C-minus comment. And he would be, he'd be constantly grading. Oh man, that thing you just said. I mean, it's definitely not an A, but I mean, that's a BB plus thing. And he'd be, con I'm not joking. He would constantly be, uh, be grading what was what people were saying, which is a fascinating idea. Uh, but not so pleasant to be in the conversation for me. And a lot of times, it's this constant evaluation and being told how you're doing and whatever. And I just, it was not the kind of relationship I felt comfortable with. A lot of times film can, films can do that by telling you what to feel, what, how you're doing, how it's doing, what it's doing through the music. And um, I, I would just like you to think, is this manipulative? Is it not? And how and where? Um, and is that bad? Um, the word manipulation, this is the last thing I'll say, the word manipulation means that you take an inanimate object, a tool, and you use it. And I felt like, I feel like a lot of films treat its audience like tools. 
it, I feel like the film says, you're a tool. I'm going to use you to feel what, you know. And uh, sometimes, you know, there are there's reasons for clarity, and, and emotional clarity is very important. But but when does when does it stop being emotional clarity, and and uh, when does it leave emotional ambiguity, become emotional clarity, and and when does it leave that arena and become manipulation? Um, that's that's the last thing I want to leave you with, and I, I hope that not just sound, but all the filmic elements, you'll be able to consider these things and make more intelligent, uh, emotionally mature, filmic and humane life choices. Uh, that's it. It's been really fun.